Salute. It's your guy, the Kevin Speaks, Vegeta's Pain, Vegeta's Pain. First and foremost, shout out to all the Saiyans out there. Man, we here with another video, right? Another day down, another academic school day in the books. Now, the I wanted to make this video, right, in accordance and sort of in chronological ordering behind the videos that I've been making referring to the behavior of our young people. Now, I think it's incredibly important to mention one of the biggest issues that our public school system is facing at this current moment is the behavior of our young people. But I'm gonna take it a step further, right? I need to directly say this. The biggest issue we're having, right? Because all races and groups, ethnic groups, et cetera, nationalities, we all have our issues. It's part of what makes us human. It's part of what makes us more alike than not, right? The fact that we are imperfect and we all have our issues. But in relate, but for me, right? Speaking primarily on issues that impact my community and people who share my reflection, the biggest issue that we're having is the behavior of black and brown young men and women. The behavior in a vast majority of these public school environments is atrocious, absolutely atrocious. And if you're a parent, if you're an uncle, a aunt, a grandparent, a godparent, whatever proximity you may have to a young person who's still going through their academic journey, please, Pay extra close attention to what's going on. Reach out to their teachers, right? If they're in after school, reach out to their after school coordinators. Reach out to the director. Reach out to the principal, the guidance counselor. All of the people who you leave in charge of your young person day in and day out, please don't just blindly assume that because it says school and because they're going to a location committed to learning, don't assume that that's what's happening, right? And here's what's true. I know oftentimes we want to blame the Department of Education. We want to blame the edifice specifically or the location. We want to blame administration, teachers. And here's what's true. Nothing is without fault. And I'm sure if we dig deep enough, we can find the issue systematically at every level. But I am here to tell you as an influencer, and allow me to qualify myself humbly by saying as an influencer who has covered grades K through 12 at this juncture, right? For the better part of two years, going on two years, I can honestly say the biggest issues that I've seen, and I've been at a myriad of schools, a plethora of schools, all varying in demographics, varying in age, varying in ethnicity and racial makeup. The biggest issue our community is impacted by, our community is impacted by, is the behavior of our young men and women. It is absolutely atrocious. Teachers are not trained to teach in chaotic environments. Teachers are not trained to settle students down. Teachers are not trained for what it is that we're seeing. And dare I say, this has probably been the circumstance, right, for as long as anybody can remember. But we need to address, it's a multifaceted and multi-layered issue that requires, right, a multi-layered analysis and response, right? So we need, not only do we need our ad admin, our officials, who by the way, go to work and show up every day with the intention of running a school, right? So we need to be clear about the fact that the adults that show up at these buildings, don't get me wrong, apathy can be something that impacts and plagues our um, population of educators. I'm not gonna say people aren't apathetic. A lot of people are jaded. A lot of people end up giving up. A lot of people get to a place of a shell of themselves where they can show up and deal with the chaos, right? And sort of navigate in and around it in order to get through their days. But that's not the way we want learning to be taking place. And I'm not professing to having all the answers, 
I'm just a humble person reporting what it is that I'm able to observe. I'm someone that cares about our community and I'm watching. I'm watching in real time how our young people are conducting themselves. And the real question we have to ask ourselves is, what are they gonna be prepared to do in the future? With the lack of discipline, the lack of accountability, right? What are they gonna be able to do? Where are they gonna be able to work, right? How are they being trained to be employable? If they're gonna own their own businesses, how are they being trained to do that? When you have to work more owning your own business than not. All our young people seem to be consumed with is social media and potentially having a social media presence, but they aren't even learning the business of YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, any of these platforms. So what is it that our young people are being prepared to do in the future? Because, look, I understand everybody's not going to higher learning, right? Everybody's not going to be a PhD. Everyone is not going to have a master's or even a bachelor's. But what are our young people doing? Luckily, right, for those of us who have been in what I call a general population, right? Once you leave school and you're in sort of the mix of everybody living, grinding, working, and trying to make something happen, we all understand. And luckily, right, education isn't the only route, right, to acquire sort of, you know what I mean, resources for yourself. There are people who are getting certificates, people who are learning skills, right? People who are foregoing the college process altogether. So we understand that that's feasible. But what are our young people being prepared to do? How are they gonna support themselves and a potential family? What are they gonna do at these next levels when there is such a gross, a gross lack of accountability and discipline? I say this not to complain, right? I say this to bring awareness because like I've been saying, I believe the pandemic has adults, they have all of us sort of wrapped up in our world and what's going on and trying to gain a level of normalcy just in general because adults set the pace, absolutely. But what I'm saying is if the children are the future and the future is coming, it's not going, then we need to take very seriously the lack of decorum, the lack of discipline. The pandemic has stagnated our young people emotionally and mentally. And if we aren't swift and careful in our response, we may lose a generation. We may, and look, for those of you who think I'm being a bit drastic, I'd say come on the front lines and then give me your multi-layered analysis after you do that, right? Come on the front lines and just observe. And let me know, let all of us know what it is that you're sort of, you've been able to gather. The behavior of our black and brown young men and women in these public school environments is atrocious. It's absolutely unacceptable and more so than your typical, right, disturbances and annoyances is delaying and stagnating learning right is creating chaotic environments that teachers are not prepared to provide instruction in. teachers are not trained to teach in chaotic environments teachers are not trained to settle chaotic things chaotic students the, the, these are not the things that you're prepped for right so please we need to start having these conversations and we need to start coming up with action plans, right? Smart goals, feasible things that we can do, attainable goals that we can reach when looking at our young people and attempting to address this issue. So like I said, please, if you have a young person going through any sort of academic journey, please make sure that you're chiming in and, and that's another thing. Parents, please take control over your child's learning process. Let the schools know what you'd like to see. In black and brown neighborhoods, we don't have enough STEM, right? We don't have enough robotics. We don't have social classes about social media, financial literacy. We don't have enough 
real world examples of things that are making people money that our young people are also simultaneously interested in and finding a way to bridge the gap between the young people's real time interest and us providing instruction that can meet right a standard and qualify as a standard for learning please take control of your child's process take control of your child's learning let the principal know let the administration know let everybody know what you would like to see being taught right let your voice be heard let them know what you'd like to see your child learning instead of going well why don't we have and can do you think it's okay this is what i'd like to see i'd like to see a chess club why aren't the students learning how to play chess i'd like to see a debate team i'd like to see a lacrosse team a hockey team just because we're people of color don't mean we have to accept the bottleneck that we've been placed in up until now we get to push we belong here we deserve everything that every school every environment and dare i say why don't we erase and create a new standard a new standard so please right check in tap in this is a conversation that needs to happen if you have a child please make sure you're tapping in and working in conjunction with that academic institution to ensure that your young person is showing up correct because right now teachers are showing up to teach <clears throat> young people are showing up to hang out and to give educators a hard time that's not we have shortages i couldn't even tell you what we have enough shortages for substitutes to have daily work the point of the matter is is that with the shortages teachers retiring teachers leaving it's not just an issue that's being over exaggerated the behavior of the young people are driving people out of a profession that's already underpaid undercompensated and under respected what is the inevitable outcome of that if not just shortages and more people leaving we're seeing the byproduct of those things it's called shortages shortages we don't have enough educators why because things are chaotic things are transforming and of course like i said there are multiple factors contributing to people leaving the profession why aren't men in the profession underpaid undercompensated under respected behavior people do not come to babysit they come to provide instruction and as parents we need to start telling our young people you don't have to like your teacher you need to learn from them you need to show up and be clear about why you're there why because in the real world you're gonna have to do what you have to do before you could do what you want to do you may not like your boss you may not like your supervisor we do our young people no favors by coddling and enabling them we need to stop right being like this versus the schools on behalf of our young people which quite frankly let me burst a lot of your bubbles a lot of your young people are dr jekyll and hyde when they leave your presence they transform nobody is exempt there is no parent who a hundred percent can account for the way their young person shows up and acts outside of their presence it's asinine to even think so and understanding and accepting that is saying look you come here to learn not to make anyone's life miserable not to do what it is that you want to do you are coming here to be prepped for an inevitable future this is serious this is not a game and it's not a laughing matter and if we aren't careful and a little more expeditious in our response well we will reap all of the unfortunate woes and with that being said i want to thank you for the time it took to deliver this message please hop up in the comments whether you agree disagree with me wanted to add on to my point you know offer and add additional information if you are also in education if you see something similar if you disagree wholeheartedly and you think i'm off base well then please provide us with your input 
above all else like comment subscribe share and enjoy um, let's bring awareness. Let's start these conversations about impact and change. And of course, it's always easier. I'm not saying we don't need therapy and us as adults need to heal, but it's always easier to build strong children than it is to fix broken men. We know how the saying goes. So let's try to attack things at the source. Let's try to get to them at the times in which we should be right when they're developing where their minds are still developing and they still are moldable and pliable so thank you again salute and shout out to y'all